Members, it is now uh, ten fifteen a.m. on December twentieth. Uh, we are back from recess from yesterday's um, yesterday's uh, committee meeting with Mr. Arroyo. Uh, we are continuing today, and prior to going on recess, we just wanted we just got clarification on uh, some of the processes that the bank took. Um, where they're at in regards to processing disbursements or awards and if there were any meetings scheduled to discuss future awards and according to mr arroyo there had there he's not aware of any upcoming meetings and the last distribution of awards was last friday although they do have a list that is pending um the distribution, uh, however, they are waiting funds to be transferred from Department of Finance. Uh, but bef before we proceed with uh, questions from the members, Mr. Royal, I, I know that uh, our council sent a request this morning. However, um, just based on our discussions yesterday, do you have any um, any documents you would like to submit today? to the committee? Uh, no, I think the uh, the email request came in this morning and we didn't have enough time to produce the documents. So we'll do that just as soon as we're, you know, we're released today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, and so with that, members, the, uh, I now open the floor to any of the members uh, and I recognize the vice speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, Mr. Rolia. Good Council. morning. Ms. Callen, good morning. Welcome to your chamber. Thank you for joining us again this morning. It's a continuation of the questions that we, we had yesterday. Uh, and thank you again for making yourself available uh, today. So <clears throat> I know that one of the things, uh, the, the startup idea was to make this uh, a loan program, and then now it's turned into a grant, uh, grant program, correct? Yes. All right. So once a grant's approved, what steps are taken to follow up if the business or nonprofit organization is utilizing the award according to their business plan? Um, that will happen um, um, on, a, I believe, it's a quarterly or semi-annual basis where we'll go actually submit, uh, send to the applicant um, a form, just basically uh, asking them in a narrative form to let us know how they use the funds and whether or not the funds were um, assisted them in uh, furthering the business plan that they had submitted, then we will go out and do site visits, you know, just to confirm what they had said they, they were going to do. Um, we will also ask them, provide us with proof of purchase uh, of anything that they purchased with the, um, with the boost funds. And Bank of Saipan does the follow-up? We'll yes, be doing the follow -up we will do that. that. Thank you for that. Who normally does the marketing for Bank of Saipan? Uh, uh, glimpses of Guam. Okay. Sorry, what was the name? Glimpses. Oh, glimpses of okay. Guam. Was there ever a bid for the marketing of the Boost program? I know kind of answered this yesterday, but can you please refresh the members? Did the Bank of Saipan put out a bid? Yes. No, we did not. No. May I ask why? Um, well, we were basically just looking for a marketing firm. Um, nonstop came highly recommended. We didn't assume that it was our responsibility to, to send out a bid simply because we were contracting with them directly. It was highly recommended, but you were saying that you guys had been contracted contracting with them directly prior to the boost program. No, 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 no. We 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 didn't think we needed to send out a bid because we were contracting that with them directly through the boost program. Right, as highly recommended by Mr. Castro. Mr. Will Castro. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> were there any way 
uh, Bank of Saipan was instructed to contract or subcontract any specific parties under the boost program? Not directed, no. Except highly recommended? Yes. Okay. I guess in the communication with the SOF, the Secretary of Finance, Mr. Dave Atelik, <clears throat> uh, you were advised to ensure the compliance with terms and conditions of the, with the ARPA in the administration of the boost program. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes. What steps have you taken, if any, to do so, so far? Well, we reviewed the, um, the, the rules and regulations, uh, but mostly because the program was created you know, with the assistance of the Secretary of Finance, um, we basically followed that, assuming that, you know, the uh, Secretary of Finance being the expert with that, you know, would, do, would, would create a program that would be compliant. So the, the rules and regulations came from the Secretary of Finance? No, no, we, we, we got that on our own. Okay. And so you guys just followed that through the the... I guess the ARPA regulations yes. and just utilize that as yeah, your, for the most part. Yes. Okay. Any additive to that from the sector of finance or Mr. Cosgrove? No, no, no. So whatever we, you, whatever the rules and regulations on their ARPA, that's all. Well, that for the most part, it was what, how the boost was created. Yeah. You know, and our assumption that was that, you know, Mr. Um, Athelig was the expert on the rules and regulations. So as he was the one individual who had kind of a, a hand in it, and um, we were told by by Mr. Castro that he would have to sign off on that. Then you know we just kind of relied on his expertise as well. Okay, so you're just relying on the on the sector of finance. So yes. whatever, I guess, request from the sector of finance, you would assume that it's right. within the rules and regulations right. of the ARPA program. I yes. mean the BOOS program. Right. Okay. All right. Um, like the committee members have said in the past, we're not against anybody receiving the boost program. We're just trying to make sure that everything's fair and everybody gets an opportunity. Applying for it, great. Uh, getting it, even greater. But we also want to make sure that there's accountability to not just not just uh, Bank of Saipan's books, but also to the central government because these are external funds that we got to be kind of careful how we use these funds. So the next question, how many of, of Bank of Saipan employees and or their immediate relatives received boost awards? Offhand, I can think of maybe three. Okay. We're not going to ask for names at the moment. I'm sure those documents will be coming in, but do you know how much each employee got? No, I don't. No. Okay. So on, on November on November fourteenth, I apologize, Chair, if we have the uh, exhibit or that would be available. Uh, you yourself, Mr. Royu, not sorry, you yourself notified Will Castro and David Atalik of having received a proposal from Nonstop Corporation for marketing, promotions, and advertising. They asked, uh, asked for approval for a formal commitment to reimburse Bank of Saipan for any and all advances made by Nonstop and or its contracts. Do you remember that communication by any chance? November what? November 14th. This was a WhatsApp chat, or? I believe so. <coughs> might possibly be an email.
just a point of clarification, if we want to pull up the exhibit, this is uh, page 13, Cam, of part eight. Can we get a, maybe a short recess, uh, Mr. Chairman, so we just get, get the, oh, he's got it. All right. Thank you. All right. And you can see it on your screen, Mr. Royal. Yes. Okay. Yes, I do remember it. And, and uh, I wanted to actually uh, just clarify a, a response that I made yesterday. The question was, um, does, uh, does the Bank of Saipan uh, pay nonstop contracts from the uh, administrative fees that the bank receives? Um, there were two basic contracts that, um, that we had with, um, with nonstop. The first one was during the initial phase of boost, uh, and that contract expired when that initial phase expired. Then there was the extension. Um, so we needed to get another contract from uh, nonstop to cover the extension of the, of that, um, uh, of the program because there were going to be additional marketing and advertising fees with respect to that. And our, our, our administrative fee wasn't sufficient to cover the amount of what was projected to be um, in the um, um, in nonstop's contract. Uh, remember, I said nonstop's contract include just the development of the program, and then the second part of it was the actual implementation, you know, of the marketing pieces, um, as well as um, you know, planning and, and coordinating events and, um, and outreach programs. When I talked to the Secretary of Finance, I said, well, the bank couldn't afford to pay, you know, that second contract with all of the additional expenses from our, um, our administration fee. So he said, we'll go ahead and pay the additional expenses, um, marketing directly from the the um the boost funds just email me or send me those invoices and he'll he'll approve payment um, um with the authorization to withdraw from the boost funds so that's what that email pertains to is that um uh we moved into the second phase and there, there were additional expenses in the contract that then were sent to the secretary of finance for his review approval and authorization to withdraw from the, the boost funds. Okay, so so the initial contract was paid out of the $340,000 that, that uh, Bank of Saipan received? Yeah, the initial contract was from our our um, contract proceeds. Which is a 340000 not including the 30% for each transaction? Yeah, not including that. Okay. Yeah. And then the remaining fifty thousand dollars, which is the extension, is coming directly from the boost. Program. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, it says it says phase three. So, was there two or three contracts? Well, phase three was the second extension, more or less. So that just basically kind of carried over. Okay. To the second so, extension. So the first two phases, I guess you would say, is within the scope of the first contract. Just the first one. Just the first one. Yeah. Then the second and the third, you know, um, were invoiced to the government. Okay. Can we get a copy of those invoices? Yes. All right. And those invoices... Roughly the amount's the same as the first contract, which is fifty thousand dollars. No, those would be a little bit more expensive because there was um, an expo. Uh, I can't remember the day of the expo, and then a gala or gala event. The the the, the, the that 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 same night. In okay. addition, there were outreach programs where um, 
the marketing team had brought um, along uh, photographers and people to take videos and things like that. So it was a bit more expensive. Okay. So that's, that's an, it's even a shorter period of time, right? So they, had the, they paid for, they included in their billing or their invoice, the marketing, regular marketing, the advertisement, the gala, the mixer, the uh, possible alcohol maybe that in the mixer into the contract or the invoice that was submitted to Banco Saipan. Yes. And we understand Banco Saipan is just the the receiving entity and it's billing the sector of finance. The sector of finance is approving the payments for. Yes. Yes. Okay. Which is some of the potential stuff that was utilizes against the ARPA regulations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so just the, the boost contracts, sorry, external boost contracts, how were they, they made? Uh, not the recipients, like what exactly what you said earlier that the sector of finance said, just go ahead and we'll pay it through the funds of the boost program. How were these contracts made or how many more outside of nonstop? Well, we've only contracted with one, um, and that was nonstop. The okay. others, I'm, I'm not sure how those were arrived at. But the invoices were going to yes. Saipan, yes. like uh, Fit to Lead. Uh, what were the other ones? I know you mentioned a couple yesterday. R Royal Soil. Royal Soil. Yeah. Fit to Lead. Yeah. Uh, nonstop. <laughs> yes. And uh, that's it? That's it's it. Three of them. And may we also get those uh, invoices if possible? I think that's part of the request, right, that we... We got okay. Is that right? Yeah, that's fine. All right, and I know that there's there's a description in those invoices as where these these monies were spent that would be requesting their payment. Correct. I probably like the, most like likely the it would be if it yeah most likely it would be um, a description within each each expense category. Sure. I I believe so. I, I mean, we would hope so, right? Uh, yes. Like the Galaxy cell, uh, was it at whatever hotel or whose house? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. What may I ask? Why did you ask for approval to the Secretary of Finance for <coughs> these outside contracts? I'm part of the outside contracts. Yes. Outside of the the boost applicants, mm -hmm. the, but the boost programs actually paying for these contracts. Mm -hmm. Why did you have to ask for an approval when it should be a contractual agreement between Banco Saipan and these entities? Because we we didn't really contract with these people. They just all of a sudden came on board. And sometimes I would just receive invoices, you know, and then I would send those invoices to the Secretary of Finance and say, what am I getting these things for? And um, th th then I th then he would respond, well, you know, this is for this, this and this. And I said, OK, so can I get your authorization to to pay them then? OK, no, I just want to kind of make that clear that there's probably outside contractual negotiations away from back of Saipan that they're just sending you the invoices and you guys are cutting the checks. That Maybe to prevent any tracking with the Department of Finance of how these monies are being spent and who's getting paid by these monies, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. With the, in that email, he said, uh, after phase three period, he said, please review the attached and let me know if we, ha if we have your approval to accept. And obviously, this is nonstop, right? I'm sorry. This is the nonstop. Uh, yeah, yeah. Those were the uh, those were the additional expenses that we received. Okay. So this is probably something that was negotiated outside of Bank of Saipan or Bank of Saipan not being a part of the party. Just send your invoice to Bank of Saipan and we'll take it. Right. Of. Right. Okay. And I guess just for the record, so that maybe the, the viewing public would understand that a lot of these contractual or these three companies were sending invoices directly to Bank of Saipan. With Bank of Saipan not knowing that there's a possible contractual agreement between the, uh, 
I don't know, I don't know what, what we call them anymore. The three entities, Bank of Saipan, I mean, sorry, Secretary of Finance, Secretary of Commerce, and Mr. Will Koster, the Chief of Staff, have come to contractual agreements with these individuals and sending the invoices to Bank of Saipan. So there's a drawdown in the check of Bank of Saipan. Therefore, you, we wouldn't be able to see it in the muni system of the central government. Hmm. All right. I yield for now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Thank you, uh, Vice Speaker. Uh, just a follow-up question, Mr. Roy. You said that uh, Bank of Saipan will do, um, is in charge of doing the follow-ups. Is that correct? Yes. Do you have the authority to recoup funds that have been misspent? Or? Um, no, I think what we would do is basically report um, and then let the, uh, the that, that, that collection process go on its own, I believe. Yeah, at this point in time, um, we don't know who would re be uh, recouping the payments, but we definitely would file a notice of, of a suspected violation. And you'll file that with? Attorney General? Or? Give it to the contractor. I'm the contractor, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of Finance. First contractor, Attorney General, and Secretary of Finance. Um, okay. Did you advise the recipient to open up a separate account? Or how would would you require? I mean, I guess what would the process be to identify whether these funds have been misspent, or seeing as how it may have may have been commingled with their other with their other accounts. We require documentation of their bank statements and all of that. So, well, what, what's the norm? What, what would the process be? Well, the well, process? basically, we'd be guided by the business plan. On their business plan, they detailed how they're going to use the funds, and um, and in the one of the conditions of um, the notice of award was that they were going to um, save keep you know, invoices, any kind of documentation that had to do with the purchase or the use of the funds for a period of five years. So we would review the business plan against those documents. And then our site visit would visually confirm that um, they had used the funds in the manner that they said they were going to use the funds. Okay. But doesn't your contract end on the 20, uh, in 2024? Yeah. So, so. um, so after the booze program concludes, and I think beginning in the beginning early next year, that's when we'll start doing our um, our monitoring and site inspections. Site inspections. And this will be for the next five years, even after the program has ended. Well, until I guess um, it becomes satisfactory that the, that they had con they had actually used the funds as as they intended to use it from. Again, remember that not everybody is getting the full amount so we're going to have to temper you know how they use the funds against how they how they said they were going to use the funds in their business plan knowing that they got less money than they had anticipated okay but if there's no deadline to complete certain projects how would you determine whether they are using them whether they're safe keeping the money or they're using it for something? Well, the, the purpose of the program was for emergency immediate needs. And so if it appears to us that, you know, um, they're holding on to the money for two years or three years, then of course that's not an, an, you know, an immediate need. So we'd basically question them as to why they're not spending the money immediately why are they holding on to the money for a st an extended period of time okay. all right thank you uh, i recognize rep probe uh, thank you mr royal uh for your testimony today again i 
I was really anticipating when you came in this morning to have the documents I requested. I'm a little bit saddened that we do not have that, especially uh, with regard to the, the uh, marketing aspects. I, I do know that you could have that uh, pulled out expeditiously. And uh, before I begin with my uh, line of questions, I would like to ask if you could perhaps, uh, when we break for recess or at lunch, if you could get those documents to us after lunch so that when we come back this afternoon, it'll make all of our jobs a lot easier for, for questions that relevant questions that we have. And again, if we have those documents, it'll make things a lot easier for all of us. It'll also speed up the time so we don't have to drag this out as long. I just wanted to make that comment. Um, Mr. Royal, I wanted to ask, and, and let's go back to nonstop corporations. So you, um, you were advised to go with nonstop corporation because it was highly, rec uh, this marketing firm was highly recommended by who? Will Castro? Yes. Did anybody else highly recommend nonstop corporation? No. Have you ever heard of nonstop corporation? No. That's interesting because neither have we. And I say that because I didn't know what nonstop corporation was. And so here is the chief of staff telling you, Bank of Saipan, that we have this highly recommended marketing firm. At any point, did you do your own due diligence and try to Google them, Nonstop Corporation Saipan? Yeah. Um, I, I found out that Nonstop Corporation is owned by Rob Trevilla. Rob Trevilla owns Tribes. Yes. And a a t-shirt company. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And so... You know, he regularly markets, you know, his products. Sure. So um, uh, based on the, you know, my perceived, ex, you know, um, success of tribes, you know, it was my, it was my understanding that they would be able to handle marketing type aspects. Marketing um, type. Of, and that's very interesting because a marketing firm is different than just an advertising firm, wouldn't mm -hmm. you say? Are they the same? Well, I mean, I think what he does with tribes is he not only markets, he markets, promotes, and advertises. Okay. But nonetheless, this co this company was just launched, Nonstop Corporation. Yes, yeah, yeah, so it was fairly new, I believe. It was fairly new. In yeah. fact, uh, you're probably one of their first clients. Is that is that accurate? I couldn't say. Uh, we couldn't say either mm -hmm. because, again, if I wanted to look it up, I Googled it, and I couldn't find anything on Nonstop Corporation Saipan. Mm -hmm. Can we find things about tribes, a t-shirt company? Sure. Mm -hmm. But there's a big stretch from a from <laughs> doing t-shirts, printing t-shirts and advertising it to to working on a multi-million dollar uh uh you know grant you know grant and and to to take over all the marketing aspects of it. And what what is in, in, in really interesting is is the beginning of that and when we broke down and read the, the comments and your frustration in him not showing up and not turning in work that was requested. That, that is where experience comes into play. If you, if you Google green light media productions in Guam, do you think you're going to get a bunch of hits? There are. They've been in business for a while. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes, they have. Yes, they have experience. Is that correct? Yes, they do. And that the reason why I ask this is because there are marketing firms in the CMI who were totally not given a chance to even bid. Anybody ever hear of Glimpses? I think so. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Glimpses? Mr. Yes, we use Glimpses. Yes. Okay. They're established. Mm -hmm. They're not a startup. But yet they weren't even considered. Reputable companies that were just totally ignored, uh, and and this was pretty much just a sole source contract that went out, and it was not just a small few thousand dollars here. It, it's quite significant, isn't this contract for for nonstop corporation? Yes, um, is a lot. Well, initially the contracts were for fifty thousand dollars. Right, and then and then when you add the additional expenses on top of it, then it becomes significant. It it is, mm -hmm. and and I say that because I saw some of the invoices on Mr. Castro's um, his yeah his submissions or on his drive or whatever, and some of them are quite uh, impressive. But here's just one of several. Um, 
are we allowed to put that document? The invoice, can we put that up? Cam, could you put that invoice up that, uh, sure, sorry. Give us a few seconds. And and that and that is part of it because we wanted to see the, the you know the emails it was being Will was insistent uh, on making sure it is not to pass the fifty thousand dollar threshold in an email uh, or was that a WhatsApp message to you that kept saying don't exceed fifty thousand dollars but anyway let's take a look at <coughs> this this is one of the uh, invoices for uh, and can you scroll up a little bit. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, down. And zoom in just a little bit. Okay, invoices for non-stop corporation. Zoom in just a little bit, a little tighter. Okay, so we have breakdown of lodging, 1820. We have median event coverage package. And then we have talent fee, um, travel expenses, meals for boost. <coughs> and then we have print materials, Beverages, corkage fee, staff salary for Boost Gala, Boost Gala for $4,076. And then the ads and things, and then scroll down a little bit more. So this 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 invoice alone, one of several that were turned in, was $33,103.29. And and sorry, go back down again. And and one of the things that that's interesting too is that it's like the, the gala, it's for beverages, corkage fee. And the concern is those beverages included alcohol, did it not? Um, I, I couldn't say. I mean, I was there. Um, I don't recall if, okay. if there was, I mean, if, if alcohol had to be paid individually or if it was just I don't is recall. is alcohol a uh, allowable expense in um, in federal uh, contracts? I'm sorry, in in for ARPA. No. Are you allowed to purchase alcohol? No. Okay, <laughs> but yet a lot of these mixtures included uh, alcohol, and and people went there and they uh, to the soiree and they. Uh, ate and they drank and they didn't pay. So somebody paid for this. Uh, would would nonstop corporation take this and then bill uh, or invoice uh, Bank of Saipan? Yes, they would. Okay. So they were getting paid for alcohol that is not an allowable expense under ARPA. Is, isn't that a concern? Yes, it was, and that's why I sent it to the uh, Secretary of Finance for his authorization to pay. And he he allowed it. Yes, he did. But upon review, if the Inspector General or somebody were to audit this and noticed that there was alcohol, in fact, at this event and that it was being purchased, then who at and they and they decided not to pay for it. Who gets stuck with uh, paying for this? I couldn't say. Well, based on my experience and as a legislator and what we've seen, my colleagues, my chairs and colleagues and I, um, it's the taxpayers that have to suck it up. Because once the federal government finds out that it's not allowable, then the local government is on the hook for it. But the sad thing is it's not going to come out of the, the uh, wallet of, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> nonstop corporation or the Secretary of Finance for, for authorizing this, even though it was wrong, it's gonna come out of our taxpayers uh, who we work for. And I think that's something that is frustrating for them. That, that sorry, it alludes to the overtime, if you remember back, that illegal overtime that we had to deal with. So this is just one more thing that we're gonna have to deal with and figure out well, sorry, taxpayers, you're going to have to foot the bill on this. So please understand, Mr. Royal, that the frustration uh, on the part of our, our taxpayers when we're seeing money being blown left and right. And as we mentioned yesterday in our discussion, you know, we know that the marketing aspect is over probably over $2 million. 
Um, I really would like, uh, after we break uh, for lunch, if you could bring that back, that document, with the actual itemized list of all the expenses for marketing. I, I really um, would appreciate that. Uh, no further questions. Thank you. Recognize the vice uh, co-chair, sir. Thank you, Chairman Donald. Um, may I direct your attention, Mr. Royal, to the screen? And on the very top, it says November 2nd, 2022, invoices from nonstop. So would you clarify for us, are these the types of invoices that will be paid, that would be paid out of boost seed funds and outside of the original $50,000 contract? with nonstop. Yes. Can we go scroll? Uh, lodging and meals. Hold on. Um, nonstop charged 1820, approximately 1,820. Media and event coverage on the, uh, October 24th, 2022, $1,699. Media and event coverage package on October 21. 1,699. Do you know how long, how many hours these coverages would be? Is it a whole day? Is it two hours? Is it one hour? Um, I'm not exactly sure what this event was for, but if... Um... I think it's the, uh, one of them is the gala and one of them is a mixer, if I recall those dates uh, correctly. And we can pull up the, um, but anyways, uh, let's move on. Talent fee, ground transportation, lodging, travel expenses, and meals for boost, expo, and gala. Th there it is. It's the expo and gala. Mm -hmm. Talent fee, $9,950. Print materials, uniforms. Who is wearing uniforms exactly? They had... Um... They had these polo shirts made with the Boost logo on, and I think certain individuals throughout the night were wearing those polo shirts. Do you know if they were awardees? I don't know who who, who they were. Who they were? Beverages, corkage fee. So there it says beverages and corkage fee and staff salary for Boost Gala on October twenty fifth, four thousand seventy six dollars. And then radio ad, newspaper ad, television ad, 13000 And all of this, this one single invoice, is, grand total amount is 33103 that was paid with seed money for boost applicants outside of the $50,000 contract. So in essence, that contract, just with this one invoice that we've seen today, is roughly about 83,000 at this point. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. I yield. Thank you, I recognize uh, Rep. Sablon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome back, Mr. Arroyo. So, Nonstop Corporation, they had a total of three contracts. The first was with you for 50,000, and the subsequent contracts were with the government. Is that correct? No, for 50, no they had two, both of with us. Two contracts. Right. Okay. And each contract was in the amount of 50000 Yes, I believe so. Yes. Covering three phases of this program. Right. Okay. Uh, now, just following up on this line of questioning regarding nonstop corporation, uh, you, you stated yesterday that um, you couldn't recall any instances where Will Castro asked you to do anything inconsistent with your normal processes as the administrator of this program. Mm -hmm. And you also stated yesterday and today that Mr. Castro highly recommended Nonstop Corporation uh, for this marketing and promotions contract. Did Mr. Castro ever tell you why he highly recommended Nonstop? He did not. <laughs> okay, but you, you took his word for it. Well, I, I, I took his word for it, and then I did the research on who the owners with nonstop were. Mm -hmm. And then when I found out that uh, the owners also promoted in marketing a, a pretty successful T-shirt line, right. my, my, my thought was that, you know, um, they did have the experience and the expertise to do that. Um, 
I, I think that the T-shirt line is not only marketed locally, but I think it's also marketed elsewhere in, in, right, the, in the right. States. Okay. I Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but he, Mr. Castro did more than just recommend nonstop corporation, mm-hmm. right? W- would, would you agree with that? Well, I mean, well, we we can pull up the communications, mm-hmm. um, maybe to refresh your memory. Um, Cam, could you please pull up the exhibits from part four? The exhibits from part four. We'll start with uh, page one. Um, page page one. Uh, if you could scroll down, please. Um, okay, here. So in August, August 19, 2022, I'll just read this into the record at 7.16 a.m. Will Castro. Hi, John. When time permits, please send me a copy of the marketing proposal again. I want to ensure it is on file and PO is issued. I know you have been compensating them. We need to invoice against their proposal so funds may be paid out. John, will do. John, media bidded. Will Castro, roger that. Will Castro, will hit 1 billion by deadline. Laughing emoji. John, so true. John, I send the marketing agreement to you by email. Will Castro, KK, Will Castro received. Be sure the contract payout amount does not meet 50000 Must be under that dollar amount. Will Castro, we may always have another one thereafter, but the initial contract should be below, capital letters, 50000 John, yep, he knows that the max is 50000 And if we could go now to page 19. Okay, Um, I think scroll up a little bit, please, Cam. Uh, Just a little bit more so we can see the bottom of page 18. Oh, okay, so on September 13, 2022, again, Will Castro. Good morning, John, how are you? I want to move on payments to Alcon for boost, one, administrator fees, two, marketing fees, and three, ads placed, et cetera. I'll need one, copies of the proposals for number one and two again to route to SOF, Secretary of Finance. Two, quotes or invoices for ads placed, i.e. radio, print, et cetera. Let's just go down a little bit. Um, perhaps this is something that Rob, would that be Rob Travilla? I believe so. Can submit that is a standalone invoice separate from his marketing work proposal. Okay. So these are more than just recommendations. Correct? Yes, they are. These are instructions from Will Castro to <coughs> one, send you copies of the marketing proposal by nonstop, right? Mm-hmm. And also the invoices. And didn't he also instruct you to make sure that the proposal was a certain amount? Yes. And why do you think he instructed you to do that? I really couldn't say other than to, you know, uh, my my thought would be other than to keep it below a certain amount of money. But for what purpose? No idea? Yeah, again, I'm not a procurement expert. Mm-hmm. So um, I would assume that there is some threshold. To keep below that yes. threshold, uh-huh. right? And also to, he, he suggests that the contracts could be split. The proposals could be split, Mm -hmm. right? Which would also potentially violate procurement rules. Were you aware of that? Again, I'm not a procurement expert, so I couldn't I couldn't Mm -hmm. say anything. But you followed his instructions, right? I did. And did you find that unusual at all? Was that an unusual request coming from Mr. Castro? Or instruction coming it from was. Mr. Castro? Yeah, I found it unusual in that, um, in that it was um, more or less dictating on how we were going to handle a contractor. Mm-hmm. But, but then it was going to be forwarded to the Secretary of Finance, who we were obligated to. So right. 
my assumption was that once he signed off on it, then it would be something that would be allowable. Okay, but it is unusual. Mm -hmm. and, and would you say also that it's inconsistent with your normal processes as the administrator of this program? that is distributing millions of dollars in public funds. I would say so. Mm -hmm. Was Mr. Castro giving you these instructions in his capacity as a review panelist or as the chief of staff or the campaign manager for the governor? Do you know what hat he was wearing when he gave you these instructions? I couldn't say, but he was a very focal point in the boost program. Mm -hmm. So I would, you know, my understanding that was he was kind of, you know, wanting to make sure these things happened in his capacity as kind of overall oversight management of, or at least some kind of director of the boost program. Mm -hmm. So it was your perception that he was the overall point of contact, overall manager and director of boost. Right. A lot of a lot of what we did came from him, mm -hmm. you know, and it would always be with the approval of the secretary of finance. And of course, of the governor. Right. I, well, I guess ultimately, but mm -hmm. for him, he would always say the, the approval of the secretary of finance. OK, thank you. Um, I will yield it at this time for this line of questioning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rep. Samblan. Any other members? I recognize uh, Rep. Joel Kamacha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And good morning, Mr. Royal. Morning. Um, the records submitted show that some applicants that send their BOOS applications directly to Mr. Will Castro. Were these applicants given priority consideration? Not that I'm aware of. Is there anything in the record that would otherwise confirm that? Um, again, the process that the review panel goes through, which applications that they receive, you know, uh, I have no idea how that how that worked. You know, I'd have no idea what applicants that they decided to look at. So I couldn't tell you if on in the review of the, those applications, they were singled out to be reviewed. Um, I couldn't tell you that. Mr. Chairman, if I. Yeah. All right. We'll take a short recess.
Just back from recess and prior to going on recess, uh, Rip Camacho had the floor. And so, um, Rip Camacho, you still have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello again, Mr. Royal. Um, so were applicants allowed to apply more than once for different businesses? Yes. Thank you. And aside from the administrative fees that you guys get paid for to, to manage the boost program, you also, as Michael Sapon also did receive a boost award in the amount of 250000 Is that correct? Yes, actually, the there was a second award, so we received a total amount of five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. May we ask what the request for that amount was is for? What we plan to use the funds for? Yes. Um, we over uh, there. We, we get a lot of requests from nonprofit organizations, social and civic groups. You know, looking uh, looking for donations and sponsorships. We like to do as much as we can to support the community, but we're limited to our budget. Um, our intention was to use these funds, you know, to assist nonprofits and. Um, and uh, social and civic groups, you know, further, you know, their, their goals and their missions. Uh, so a lot of that money is going to be earmarked for that. Um, as well as, you know, we do also um, financial education. We produce um, uh, uh, videos targeted to young children to, you know, help them understand, you know, how to best use their money, save money, spend it wisely. And so some of that money is going to be used to help us produce more and more of those videos. The thing about our, our, um, our application was some of that money was also earmarked to be, uh, to be used as low cost loans, you know, to individuals who might have difficulty, you know, getting loans um, in the traditional way. But we're starting to pull back on that because we're not sure if we could use that money to lend. Um, and, and, and if that is not the case, then more of that money will be used towards community reinvestment. Thank you. And we appreciate that you do that. You do invest that money into back into our community and nonprofits. Um, you wrote the first draft of the boost program and the purpose and plan, right? Yeah, I, I, I proposed the, the, uh, the first draft as a loan program and submitted it to um, the three government entities for their review and comment. Mm -hmm. And it originally had a requisite starting date that businesses had to have been established by October 1st, 2019. When did this requirement change? I can't recall, but I think it probably changed sometime around it, it being converted to a grant program. And why did it change to allow for newly opened businesses? That was uh, part of the understanding that there would be businesses that would expand the, com uh, the economy, allowing new businesses that, you know, could have or were looking at establishing themselves prior or during the COVID period, but would have to pull back operations because, uh, because of market conditions. Okay. And the requirements for nonprofits to apply also stated that they had to be registered as a 501c3 or a 501c19. Did this requirement change? And if it did, why did it change? No, I don't think there was, and I can't recall, but um, uh, I think the, the whole intent was, was not to have, uh, not require the 501c3, primarily because um, there was another federal program that was available to nonprofits that were 501c3s and those nonprofits that were not couldn't avail of that program. So this, the, the boost program was going to be able to provide them with some kind of funds. Thank you. Did any grantee receive the CAP award in their buckets incubators at 499,999 or Noyonimo at 500,000 or industry diversification 1 million? or nonprofits, 250,000? 
those um, caps were initially es established when it was a loan program. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we controlled how much people could um, could borrow, or based on um, you know their ability to 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 settle the the, uh, the financing. When it converted to a grant program, it was decided that you know those weren't going to be kind of hard and fast rules. They were just going to be kind of internal guidelines for the the, the review panel just to kind of consider. But um, if an award, if they they saw fit to um, to grant an award in excess of those those uh, limits, then those limits weren't really going to be a hard and set a hard and fast rule. And did Mr. Castro prepare the Bank of Saipan letter to respond to the subpoena Ducis Tecum? Did he prepare the letter? Uh, which which letter? I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know which letter you're referring to. From the legislature. Did he prepare the letter from the legislature? No, who prepared in response to the subpoena Ducis Tecum that this joint committee issued? Who prepared the Bank of Saipan? Oh, I response? did. Okay. You did. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. We asked that question because Department of Commerce, Secretary of Com or Department of Finance and the Office of the Governor have submitted identical replies. And they all said, check with the administrator of the boost program. Mm. And that, sir, is you, as, as we all understand it. So that's why we're asking. Uh, that line of questioning. Okay. Were there, where is the preliminary list that Mr. Castro messaged you in about September 2022? And how was that preliminary list prepared? I think what he was referring to um, was... Um, I think this was at the, at the very start of the program, if I can, if I understand it correctly, where we were looking at doing these test runs. Is that what you're referring to? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. So what he had asked for was um, a list of, oh, I, I, I believe, um, applications from Tinian, applications from Rhoda, um, maybe some applications from Saipan. And it was from that list that the panel would uh, would select applications to review and recommend to the governor. I think that was the preliminary, preliminary list he was list. asking for. Was it was it prepared by the review panel? Or was it uh, by just one member of the panel? And can you provide this joint committee with the preliminary list if you can? Right. So basically, it was just um, a. Um, we keep an we keep an application logs, and that application logs is sorted by um, you know island is sorted by type of business, uh, sorted by date, and so from that application log, he had asked, I believe, to sort, you know, applications just from Rhoda or maybe sort applications just from Tinian and provide me a list of those applications together with the applications so that though just those applications on that list, and I guess that's what he's referring to as the preliminary list, just those applications on those lists, the review panel would look at. Uh, this question is more subjective, uh, Mr. Royal, but under normal banking conditions as a banker yourself looking at the the awards that were given to other incubators or cinema incubators or cinema anonymous you as a banker did at any even point of time you ever ask yourself or or feel that something was not right the awards given and the amounts given <sighs> 
As a as a grant program, you know, I I didn't really have any kind of opinions to that. I mean, if it were a loan, then I probably would be thinking differently. But as a grant program, I I didn't really give any thought to 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 whether or not the amounts were too much, too little, um, or not enough. I don't know. Okay, thank you, Mr. Royal. Thank you, Chairman. You thank you, Rip Camacho. Um, just to expound further on some of uh, Rem Camacho's line of questioning. You know, when this was initially designed as a loan program and then later switched to a grant, um, was there any discussion in terms of trying to um, kind of mirror this after the PPP where it was initially a loan and then could be converted to a grant upon meeting certain conditions? Not to my knowledge. Do you know if that would be allowed moving forward? If, if say, we find, you know, the committee determines that, you know, further restrictions need to be in place and all these, and we want to continue this program, is that, do you know, if this would be allowed where it starts off as a loan but later converted to a grant? So technically yep. it's not a loan? Well, the only reason why it was converted to a grant was was after we had gone through the exercise to develop a loan program, we were we found out that the funds could not be used um, as loans. And so it was decided, I mean, the only course that we, was decided was, you know, it would be used as grants. And as far as I know, that was the only the discussion and the only reason why it converted from a loan program to a grant program. Okay. All right. I recognize our vice chair. Thank you, chair. I just have some follow up questions. So, and just going back to initially, it was a loan. Like the ARPA funds was given to the CNMI to assist the people. Why would they even think about giving it out as a loan? Well, I, I I don't believe at the time it was it, it, it was common knowledge that the that the uh, the grant fund I mean the the funds could be used as a loan. It was until after we started the exercise that it was it was brought to our attention that or at least brought to Will Castro's attention. Right, but just even the intent, right? The intent of ARPA was to help the people. So why would they even consider giving it out as a loan? That I mean that that that's sort of helping the people, but if they have to pay it back plus interest, that's not really helping. Yeah, so so the, some of the discussions when we were considering that as a loan program was to make it a forgivable loan, uh, make it uh, low interest rates loans, things like that. Um, but again, I mean, it was just it was just more or less discussion, more or less putting things together uh, just in the event that this is something that we could do. But then when we found out that we couldn't do it, then we switched gears. Okay. Um, thank you for that answer. So just going back to your the Bank of Saipan application. So you stated that the bank has already received 500000 correct? Yeah, yes. Okay. Has the bank started spending no. that money? So is the money sitting somewhere earning interest? No, no, we don't have an account that earns interest. It's so it's sitting in your cash, in bank of cash account, account yes. and not it, it's not in a interest bearing account. No, no, it's more or less sitting in our Federal Reserve Bank account or yeah, or or one of our just deposit. I mean, uh, bank controlled accounts. Are there any plans to use some of those funds, a portion of it? Uh, to invest in the stock market or the like? No, we don't invest in the stock market. We probably might use some um, um, in investments as we're holding on to some of the funds to deploy. Like, for example, when we start receiving requests for sponsorships and things like that, that money needs to be held somewhere. So we'll do that. And then once once we start receiving requests and we start vetting those things out, then that money will be released. Can you elaborate a little bit when you say some investments, like what types of investments? Normally, it's just um, um, CDs, certificates of deposits, things like that. Okay. And um, so how much did you, did Bank of Saipan request on their application? 1.5 million. 1.5? Mm -hmm. And out of that, um, 
obviously you, the bank has already received 500K. The remaining balance, is there a plan to pay that one out too? I'm sorry? So the remaining balance out of the 1.5, which you, um, the bank has already received 500K, right? Mm -hmm. Is there any plan with the whatever money that's left to pay out the remaining balance? I, I, no, I don't. I, not that I know of. Not that I know of. But, you know, even if I think it were approved, we, we probably wouldn't accept it at this point in time. I mean, be, we feel that, you know, uh, for what we want to do, perhaps the, the, the $500,000 will allow us to do that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if we weren't awarded the rest of it, we, we probably wouldn't. It wouldn't matter to us. Okay. So you request, so not you. <laughs> The bank requested for 1.5, but the, but the bank is willing to settle for the 500k. Oh yeah, we were we were willing to settle for the 250 as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Are you? Thank you, Vice Chair. I recognize Rep. Simla. Thank you. And just following up on those questions, um, so would you clarify, Mr. Royal? So the bank actually applied for 1.5 million, but what was the total amount of the award that was approved? The total of, to the bank. To the bank. 500,000. Yeah. 500,000. And the ledger that you submitted to us in response to the subpoena duces tecum only shows an award of 250,000. So mm -hmm. did you receive two awards? Did the bank yes, receive two? Yes, we did. Two? The second award came after we submitted the response. I see. And and so that wasn't the ledger that you submitted doesn't just show initial payments. That shows the total amount awarded, at least as of that time. Yes. Okay. Um, and when did you get the notice that the bank had received two awards of 200 The second 000? award. Yeah. It, it had to be less than a month ago, something like that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to double check. Mm -hmm. And do you have any knowledge of how that decision was made to give the bank a second award? I do not. Was there any communication with the review panel, with the governor, to increase that award? From the bank? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Okay. Now, help me understand this. So this is a boost grant program that's intended to benefit small businesses uh, as well as nonprofit organizations. And the bank applied for a boost grant with the intention of using those funds to distribute to nonprofit organizations. How, how, how are you not competing with other nonprofit organizations that were applying for this the same pot of money? Well, again, I mean, th these would be like um, small baseball teams, you know, soliciting funds to support their uniforms and things like that. Um, you sponsored a $20,000 hole in one prize at one point. Is that the kind of thing that this grant would have been used for? Kind of more or less some or something along those lines. Um, um, uh, you know, just, 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 just something along those lines really uh, for, you know, reinvesting back into the community. Right. But also competing with other nonprofits that were, applying for these funds, right? I guess you could look at it that, but, but yeah. you know, that, that wasn't our intent to compete against anybody else for this money, but it was just. But it's a competitive program, right? right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now you said that the caps on awards in each of the different buckets uh, were not, they were internal guidelines, but they were not hard and fast guidelines. When was it decided that these would not be hard and fast guidelines? When the program switched from a loan to a grant. Okay, so these internal not for public consumption boost guidelines that you've provided to us and that Mr. Castro has <coughs> provided to us and all these different versions, were they ever actually finalized? Yeah, there was a final version. Um, I think I provided you a copy of that. Uh, I think it was Mark. There were at least eight versions, maybe. So. 
Yeah, there was a final version. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I and it does indicate caps, though, caps on awards. Right, yeah. And again, that was that was more or less an internal guidance. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the final iteration of these guidelines then, was there still a separate bucket for banks? No, because that, that bucket had, had more or less uh, converged with the Nayanamu. Okay, for the business grant. Right. And the, the cap on that was 500,000. Right. right, again, internal guidance. Okay, and then for internal guidance for nonprofits, the internal not hard and fast rule was 250,000. So the bank as a business applied for a grant to aid nonprofits and got the full amount of 500,000. Mm -hmm. Is that in effect what happened? Mm -hmm. Did anybody else get the full amount? When you mean full amount, full amount of their request? The full amount of 500,000. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people who uh, who had got more than five hundred thousand. Yes. Businesses that applied for boost grants received more than five hundred thousand. I believe so. I mean, I'd have. They're to not in the ledger that you provided. Well, I think in terms of maybe common ownership or whatnot, but one individual business getting five hundred thousand dollars, I I can't say. It. I'll have to go back and look. I I can tell you right now, the highest amount that's reflected in the ledger that you gave us was two hundred fifty thousand, mm -hmm. including the grant to Bank of Saipan. But you're telling us now that Bank of Saipan actually received two awards, right? Right. Under the Nai Nayanamu bucket. Right. Well, did any other business receive five hundred thousand? I can't tell you right now. I'll have to go and look at the record. Would that be in the updated ledger that you provide us then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, did other banks apply for boost grants? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Were other banks even made aware that they could apply for boost grants? Well, it was out there, uh, not Yonimu. So, I mean, if a bank met, met that uh, qualification, then they could... Uh, decide on their own if they wanted to apply. So I couldn't tell you why they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are you aware of any other business applicant that received more than one award? The same business applicant receiving more than one award? I believe so. I believe some some applicants had had received a second round of an award under the same application. And would that be reflected in the ledger? That you no, guessed? because in the ledger, it would just show the total amount that was dispersed. Okay. But we'd be able to see the updated amounts then from the first ledger that you gave us and the one you're giving us today, right? Um, what we probably would have to do is, uh, is, is sort it out so that for each applicant, you could see at what point in time they received what amount of money. So it could be an initial amount and then it could go, had gone through a second round and they've got an additional amount, maybe even a third round and they would have gotten a, more money. Okay. Well, we, we can come back to Bank of Saipan's grant application. Um, I, I wanted to go back to, to the, the whole process of review. So you mentioned the other day or maybe maybe it was today, that you mostly just saw Will Castro coming to the Bank of Saipan to review boost applications. Is that correct? Well, coming to the, the, um, the yes, to the bank. And he would be in the room with the applications. Okay. Did um, he my, come often? What, what do you mean by often? Like every day, a few oh, times no. a week, once a week? No, it would be periodic. And, and it would there wouldn't be a, a, a pattern to it. Okay. Did he ha have an office set aside for him at the Bank of Saipan? No, he did not. No. Okay, but he came, so like once a week, every other week? Again, I couldn't say. I mean, okay. it was just it was just random. Random. Was he usually by himself? A lot of times that I saw him there, he was by himself. Okay, and the others, how often did they come in? Once a month? Not very often. What does that mean? Um, I think I, I probably, at the top of my head, uh, if 
five or six times or something like that. Uh, something. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure, but okay. you know, I mean, it didn't seem as often as he did. And also, just by themselves, just randomly. Not. Not necess Not. Not by themselves. They would. Uh, you know, the the two individuals from the Department of Commerce would usually come together. Mr. Tysagui and Mr. De Leon Guerrero. Yes. Okay. Um. What about the Secretary of Finance? Did he come in to review applications? Not that I not that I've noticed. Okay. And could you refresh our memory? When was the very first deadline for this program? I want to say September 18th, right? Okay. September 18th. And when was the second? A month later. And the third. Was it a month later? October 18th. October 18th, okay. yeah. And then the third deadline? Oh, uh, November 18. November 18, and then <clears throat> the final deadline. I believe that was the final deadline. I'm not aware of it being extended beyond. Mr. Castro yesterday said the final deadline was December 18. December 18 was just for the um, these applicants who submitted incomplete applications. They were given up to December 18. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, let the record re reflect that Ms. Callan said that the December 18 was the final deadline for everybody who submitted incomplete applications to make their applications whole. Is that correct? Okay. Um, Cam, could you please pull up the exhibit for part four? Uh, page 13. And we're looking at the September 2nd um, could you, I'm sorry, could you enlarge that? Okay, on September 2nd, 2022, Will Castro to Mr. Arroyo. Will Castro, can give me summary? Uh, number of applicants, total sum, John. I'll send the update when I get back to the office. Will Castro, no rush, smiling emoji. We may meet on Wednesday 07 to review submissions from Rhoda. John, okay. John, media omitted. I think we can look at some of the incubator and Nai Animo applications as well. Small amounts say 150,000 below and below. Will Castro, 250 plus application, $80 million plus. Uh, looks like a smiling or laughing emoji. John and still coming in. Will Castro, yeah, smiling emoji. So as early as September 2nd, you had more than 250 applica applications totaling $80 million in requests even before the very first deadline in this program. Is that correct? And it appears so, yes. That's eight times the total amount of money that was actually available at the time. Mm -hmm. And would you refresh our memory, Mr. Arroyo, who told you to extend the deadline? The, the decisions to extend the deadline came from Mr. Castro. Mr. Castro. And did you push back at all? No, I thought I thought the extension would would be good because then it would um, it would give more people opportunity to submit applications. Mm -hmm. Did you think the third extension would be good, and the fourth? Once we got to the third extension, uh, you know, I was saying, well, we really need to put more money into this thing because. Um, you know, accepting more applications with not adding more money to it, you know, would just make it tougher and tougher for people to apply. Right. So he would always tell me that, yes, more money is coming. And then, and then that, the second, the second 6 million uh, was transferred over. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now the uh, additional extension uh, there, I received word that there is another $3 million available. Or could be available. Three million. Mm -hmm. Okay. And ultimately, was it another? Was this an addition to the total of seventeen million that was mentioned the other yeah, day? Yeah. So the total would come to twenty million dollars. And when did you receive this word? It was, uh, I think, it was Friday last week. Last Friday. Yeah, we received a. Um, 
there, there's an, uh, an ARPA drawdown request and it was emailed to us for the amount of $300,000. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, for the amount of $3 million. And I looked at that and I wasn't aware um, that there was more coming in. Um, the grants that we were awarded was $17 million and we would have already received that. We're still waiting for the last $2 million to come in. Right. Once that was in, and then if we signed off on this drawdown request for $3 million, that would exceed the amount of grants that we were awarded, and I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I messaged uh, the Secretary of Finance and asked him about this $3 million and why we received this drawdown request. And he told me that the governor had approved another $3 million. I see. So in addition to the two million that you were still one and a half, one and a half to two million that you said was left mm -hmm. uh, just the other day, there's an additional three million coming in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, okay. And just going back to the issue of incomplete applications, uh, Cam, could you please take us to part eight, page 25, November 21. Twenty-one. Okay. Um, so this is a message. We'll start with the one from Miss. Uh, so Kay Kent is Karen Callen. Um, November twenty-one. Miss Karen asks, please confirm with Will that we are no longer accepting supporting documents, i.e. business licenses, now that we are past the deadline. So this is past the November 18 deadline, right? And then Karen writes, Chief, I assume this is Will, Chief, this is from John. Call me when you have time to discuss. Will says, we are. All submissions by the deadline may be made whole throughout. We may close this window by December 18. It's no new submissions after the deadline, complete or incomplete. So uh, the communications here, Mr. Arroyo, show your, that, that you advised your staff to confirm right, with Mr. Castro that no incomplete applications would be reviewed after the November 18 deadline. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And then Mr. Castro is seen in the messages saying that actually, yes, incomplete applications may still be reviewed possibly up to December 18, as long as people make their applications whole before the program expires, correct? Mm -hmm. Did you find that to be an unusual instruction? I did, primarily because of the, the, the program ended on, on the 18th. Um, but I thought that, you know, giving people additional time to submit just the, the missing items of their applications to make it whole would be a benefit to the applicants. Sure. But would it also be unfair to the other applicants who had taken the time and be, made yes. the effort to yes. submit complete applications yes. by the deadline? Yes, it could be. Uh -huh. Did you express that concern to Mr. Castro or anybody else in the review panelist? No, I didn't. Um, may I ask why not? Well, for the most time, most, most part, we were just, you know, um, um, doing, would always be, you know, do what we could do best to assist the applicants, right? And, um, and so giving them the not the ones that had not completed their application that benefit seemed to me along those lines that you know we'll do what we can to help them mm -hmm. okay um but if an applicant that submitted their application on time before the deadline in full and met all the requirements asked you to justify that what would you tell what would you say to them Mm. I I would just basically say that, you know, I mean, we're here and we're trying to assist the additional applicants and, and everybody, everybody's application, according to what we were told by the review panel, had an opportunity to be reviewed. So it wasn't as if, you know, um, 
applications would not be reviewed. I mean, the review panel said every application would be reviewed. Right. But you have thousands of applications to review. And the other part of this problem is that money is also being awarded as applications are still being reviewed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a fundamental unfairness, I think. I think many of us would think in continuing to accept and review incomplete applications at this point in the program, especially when you've already received more than enough applications to exceed and completely exhaust the total amount available for this program. I know that I'm out of time, Mr. Chairman, uh, so I will yield uh, until lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll just take a few clarifying questions from the, the next two members, and then we'll break for lunch. And so I recognize Vice Chair Magofnia. Thank you, Chair. Just real quick um, follow-up on the extension. So, Mr. Arroyo, on your contract, Bank of Saipan, with the CNMI to administer the boost program, was there an explicit date on when the bank will complete that service? I'd have to double check. Let me say, I think I think it expires on twenty twenty four. So, so Bank of Saipan service uh, to provide service to the CNMI regarding the boost uh, expires on twenty twenty four, but the deadline was yeah. So the November. award periods, budget period uh, nine nine one twenty twenty two through August. 31 2024 I guess I'm uh, so I'm curious why would the the um, service period be into 2024 if the program ends in 2022 my assumption is to continue on with the monitoring and um, of the um, of the applicants yeah. that received boost awards okay so in the contract is uh, does the contract allow for extensions of the program like so so the boost program was supposed to end initially in september then it got extended into october and then november right so mm -hmm. uh does the contract allow for that type of change the agreement that we got not that i not that i've seen okay I guess what I was, uh, where I'm going with this is for every time that the program got extended, uh, does the CNMI incur additional cost as part of the service that the bank is providing? Yes. And what would those costs be? Well, our fee is 2%. 2% 2 2 of, of the amounts awarded, 2% of the transferred funds. So, it, so in the next uh, transfer, which is the three million that you are aware of, two percent of that would be assessed uh, as our administrative fee. Yes. Got it. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Vice uh, Chair. Uh, I recognize Rep. Joel Camacho. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Royal, prior or during the phase or, or during the process in which you uh, you and Mr. Will Castro, the Secretary of Finance, and Mr. Taisegui were coming to an agreement to to create the fine print and the details to run the boost program at any point in time, was there a condition in which that would uh, protect Bank of Saipan, like the liabilities? Are there any liabilities? I ask this question because in the event that the boost program will not be honored as a grant by the federal government. Can the program revert back to a loan to repay back the CNMI taxpayers who will end up forking out the bill? What is uh, Bank of Saipan's role in that, in that, in that, in that event? There, I, I don't know, and I'm not aware if there's a mechanism to roll it back into a loan. So I couldn't say. But is there what 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 are the liabilities that Bank of I, Bank of Saipan what do, what do they hold in terms of um, if the program doesn't work in that matter? Is Bank of Saipan responsible for repaying that back or I couldn't tell you. 
um, I would have to I would have to confer with my attorney, but I, I couldn't I couldn't the legal aspects of it. Um, I'd have to confer with my attorney. Uh, could you provide that document when you do with your attorney? We would we would the committee would also like to know. Uh, any discussions with the attorney is protected by attorney pri privilege, so we wouldn't be able to provide it. So in essence, you're you're you yourself are not sure if the program fails. What what happens, and where where do we as taxpayers, our constituents, that especially those boost applicants that have failed to receive a boost applications uh, or checks, and because we we've been encountering a lot of disgruntled and disappointed people the small businesses that have applied and either got a small fraction versus new businesses that have been approved and i know you've mentioned that the review panel was responsible for that but our worry is that these people in in the end in that they file a taxpayer lawsuit and who forks that bill that's a, that's going to be a big issue moving forward anyways i just wanted to to ask but thanks for for the clarification Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Camacho. And at this time, members and Mr. Royo, we will break for lunch and we will come back at 1.30 this afternoon. Uh, we intend to finish the hearings today, um, but that will, again, depend on how quickly we get through this afternoon. And so we'll, we'll try to, members will try to start at, uh, early or be, if you can be here on time. Um, we'll, we'll try to finish off today. And so at this time, I call for a recess and we'll return at 1.30 p.m.